Hello and welcome, my wonderful viewers, listeners, and learners at home. Today in chemistry, we'll be looking at another aspect of acid, base, and salt. Today we'll be discussing bases. In our last class, we have seen acid and their characteristics as well as their method of preparation. Today we'll be looking at bases. So follow me with your pens and paper. Get set to take notes for today's lesson, and I'm sure you will learn from the lesson. Now, looking at the content for discussion today, I would like you to look at uh, what I have, the definition of acid, the, the definition of base, the classification of base, and the properties of base. Those are the things that we'll be looking at. So let me start with the definition of a base. What is a base? Now, just like an acid, a base can be defined in different ways. A base is just like the acid has been defined using three theories, but generally a base is defined as any substance that can neutralize an acid. So any substance that can neutralize an acid is called a base. But Arrhenius defined an acid as any chemical substance that when dissolved in water produces hydroxyl ion, acid only negative ion. As you can see from the equation on the screen, sodium hydroxide in aqueous medium gives you sodium positive and OH negative. The OH negative is the hydroxide ion, and it is a characteristic of a base. Now, let's look at the other definition of a base, and we'll be looking at Lowry and Brownstead definition of a base. Now, Lowry and Brownstead sees a base as any chemical substance that can accept a proton, or a base is a proton acceptor. A base is a proton acceptor. So if you look at the equation HCl plus sodium hydroxide to give you sodium chloride uh, plus water, you will have seen that the proton from hydrochloric acid added to the OH in the base to give you water, as it can be seen so. So you can see the conjugate, uh, the acid base, conjugate base, and conjugate acids on the screen displayed. Now let's look at the, the last uh, definition of the base. And this definition is based on the Lewis concept of a base. And based on Lewis concept of a base, Lewis see a base as electron pair donor or any substance that donates electron pair. He sees a base as an electron pair donor or any substance that donates electron pair. And that's what Lewis sees a base as. Now, apart from this, we'll be looking at the classification of a base. Yes, we'll be looking at the classification of base. Just like we classified uh, acid, we'll be classifying base based on strength. We'll be classifying base on um, solubility. We'll be classifying base based on, based on molecular structure. So based on strength, the strength of a base is determined or dependent on its degree of dissociation or ionization. Hence, Bases are classified into strong base and weak base. A strong base is any base that dissociates or ionizes completely in solution. Example of a strong base is your potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, just to mention but a few. What about a weak base? A weak base is any base that dissociates or ionizes partially in solution. As you can see, uh, in, I partially also mean incompletely. In the case of examples of ammonium hydroxide or ammonia solution or ammonia gas, all these are examples of um, the weak bases. Now, moving forward, let's also look at the uh, classification of base based on solubility. Now, based on solubility, um, a base can be classified into soluble base, which is called alkali. An insoluble base. So when we say what is an alkali, say an alkali is a soluble base or is a soluble hydroxide or any base that is soluble in water is called an alkali. Now, example of alkali include sodium hydroxide, sodium triosocarbonate 4, and potassium hydroxide. You will say sodium triosocarbonate 4 does not have um, uh, OH in it. Sorry, the 2 is not there. It does not have OH in it. But then remember that uh, when it hydrolyzes in water, it will produce hydroxyl ion. Now, there are bases that are not soluble in water. Example is copper oxide, zinc triosocarbonate 4, just to mention but a few. My distinguished learners at home, I hope you are following these lessons properly. Now, let's look at the molecular structure, classification based on molecular structure. Now, based on molecular structure, um, 
Basic bases are classified into metal oxide, e.g., sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, iron hydroxide, etc. Metal hydroxide like sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, metallic trioxocarbonate 4 like sodium trioxocarbonate 4, potassium trioxocarbonate 4, calcium trioxocarbonate 4, etc. Then we have metallic hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4, e.g., sodium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. Potassium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4, calcium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. Note that trioxocarbonate 4, e.g., sodium trioxocarbonate 4, hydrolyzes, causing the neutral medium to become alkaline. If you look at the equation here, you will see sodium trioxocarbonate 4 plus water, it will give you sodium hydroxide plus sodium hydrogen trioxocarbonate 4. In this case, the neutral uh, substance become basic due to the formation of sodium hydroxide so let's look at the properties of an acid what are the properties of an acid just like in the, uh, of a base just like in the case of acid um, properties of base can be physical and can be chemical let's look at the uh, physical properties of a base the base has a bitter taste uh, a base has a uh, turn red blue, litmus paper to blue and we say strong or concentrated base are corrosive they are caustic in nature and we say the base have a slippery touch or soapy feeling. Actually, base, uh, soaps contains bases, and that's why they have that feeling that you feel. Now, lastly, bases are, are, are electrolyte in solution because they are ionized to positive and negative ions, which goes to the cathode and anion anodes, respectively. Now, what are the chemical properties of bases? Now, when you look at the chemical properties of bases, you see that one of the chemical properties of bases is the fact that a base can uh, react with acid to form salt and water only. And we call that neutralization reaction. You saw it in my previous presentation when I was discussing acid. And base can also react with ammonium salt to produce ammonia gas. And lastly, base react with some metals to liberate hydrogen gas. Example is zinc solid reacting with sodium hydroxide to give you um, zinc, uh, uh, sodium zinc oxide or sodium zincate plus hydrogen gas. My learners at home, I hope you have enjoyed this session of lessons. I'm sure you have grasped quite a number of things from what I have discussed. If you have, you can follow me on my YouTube channel as you'll be seeing some other lessons that I have presented previously. If you like what you see, you can hit the subscription button and subscribe. Have a beautiful day. Even as we round up from today's lesson, I would like you to stay at home, keep studying, because studying is the way to success. I'd like to say have a beautiful day. You can reach me on my phone number 80